Do in the name of the Almighty God swear. Do in the name of the Almighty God swear. That I'll bear true faith and allegiance. That I'll bear true faith and allegiance. To the Republic of Ghana as by law established. That I will uphold the sovereignty and integrity of Ghana. And, and that I will preserve, and preserve protect, protect, and defend, and defend the, Constitution of the, of Ghana. the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. So help me God. So help me God. The oath of Minister of State. I, I Kenneth, having been appointed Minister of State, having been appointed Minister of State, do in the name of the Almighty God swear, the name of the Almighty God swear that I will at all times, at all times well and truly, well and truly serve, the Republic of Ghana serve the Republic of Ghana in the office of Minister of State, in the office of Minister of State that I will uphold Preserve, Preserve, protect, protect and, defend and defend the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana as by law established. And that I will to the best of my judgment, at all times when required, freely give my counsel and advice for the good management of the public affairs. of the Republic of Ghana, Republic of Ghana. and that I will not directly or indirectly reveal any matters that shall come to my knowledge in the discharge of my duties and committed to my secrecy as Minister of State. So help me God. And the final oath is the oath of secrecy. I, I holding the office of Minister of State, do in the name of the Almighty God swear that I will not directly or indirectly communicate or reveal to any person any matter which shall be brought under my consideration or shall come to my knowledge in the discharge of my official duties except as may be required for the discharge of my official duties or as may be specially permitted by law. So help me God. Thank you very much. It's a my pleasure to invite the President of the Republic to present the instrument of appointment to the Honorable Minister. Thank you very much. Honorable Minister may now proceed to the table to sign the oath book. Honorable Minister.
Honorable Mr. May resume his seat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've reached another important stage of today's ceremony and that's addressed by the President of the Republic. It's my pleasure to invite Mr. President to deliver his address. Clergy, Father Campbell, Mr. Vice President, Chief of Staff of the Office of the President, Secretary to the President and officials of the Presidency, Minister Designate for Finance, Governor of the Bank of Ghana, the Chief Director and officials of the Ministry of Finance, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome all of you to Jubilee House, the seat of our nation's presidency. A few moments ago, I swore into office Kenneth Nanayao Kuntun Kunku Ufureata can offer to all and sundry. The last man standing <laughs> as Minister for Finance, having administered to him the oath of allegiance, office, and secrecy. Today's event means that I have now completed the construction of the government of my second term, having earlier sworn into office 29 substantive ministers and 16 regional ministers. It is, it is yet another occasion since my investiture for my second mandate that the executive and legislature have cooperated to promote good governance in the country by the expeditious yet thorough manner in which Parliament conducted the constitutional process of prior approval of a nominee for ministerial office by the President of the Republic. I commend Parliament for the bipartisan consensual manner in which it did its work. I want to reassure Parliament of my determination to collaborate with it to ensure that the wealth of the Ghanaian people remains a paramount consideration of public policy. I'm grateful to the House for giving me a good birthday present with the approval of the minister designated for finance on my birthday yesterday. <laughs> the circumstances surrounding Ken Ofurata's appearance before the Appointments Committee of Parliament are well known. And I'm happy that he has recovered fully from his medical condition and is back, hale, hearty, and raring to go. We thank God for his mercy. He created, as usual, some history, becoming the first minister in the life of our nation to have been vetted for two consecutive days, putting himself admirably in the exercise. Everyone who watched him on national television at the committee hearings can understand why I had little choice but to re-nominate him to serve another four years as Minister for Finance and why, by the grace of God, it will be at the end of my second and final term of office the longest serving finance minister in the history of the Fourth Republic. <laughs> Over two days, he exhibited clarity of thought, a clear understanding of how to grow an economy, and what prospects the economy holds for the Ghanaian people. He provided a staunch defense of his record in office as finance minister from 17 February 2017, 
when he inherited a weak, faltering economy from the Muhammad administration and helped Mel's economy back to good health by 6 January 2021. He highlighted what public service means to him and outlined the plans he has to help revitalize the Ghanaian economy and restore to the kinds of growth and expansion witnessed before the onset of COVID-19. Mr. Finance Minister, I congratulate you heartily on your appointment and I'm sure you know that the Ghanaian people are expecting you to put the economy on a sound footing once again and help lead it out of the ravages of the pandemic. On my part, I'm looking forward to working with you over the course of the next four years as we seek to protect our progress and transform Ghana for all. The theme of the MPP 2020 Manifesto, the sacred compact that binds us to the Ghanaian people. Indeed, you have your work cut out for you, even though our economy despite the pandemic, was one of the few in the world that recorded positive GDP growth for 2020. <laughs> Ultimately, what the people of Ghana are expecting is a visible improvement in their standard of living. That is an increase in real wages for working people, an enhancement of the incomes of farmers and fisher folk, and a rise in profits for businesses. So talk of good macroeconomic management, fiscal responsibility, and GDP growth has to reflect that goal if the talk is to be meaningful. As I indicated to your colleague ministers of their swearing in, the Ghanaian people have given us four more years to do more for them. So as you assume your position in government, I urge you to provide leadership that will ensure that the work on which we are embarked benefits the progress of our nation and helps raise the income levels of our people. That is why we are here, and that is why the Ghanaian people voted for us. Once again, I congratulate you on your appointment and wish you Godspeed in the discharge of the high duties of your office as Minister of State. May God bless us all in our homeland, Ghana, and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention. We thank Mr. President for his address. It's now my pleasure to invite the Minister for Finance to respond to Mr. President's address. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, Madam Chief of Staff, colleague ministers, the Governor, Secretary, senior officials, government, uh, members from the ministry, um, friends and family, members from the faith-based organizations, ladies and gentlemen, it is really an honor and a pleasure um, to be here. Um, the last 125 days, uh, have been surreal since I got COVID in November of last year. I can only express my gratitude to God for his healing grace and the prayers from all corners of the country. Thank you to all the good people of Ghana. Thank you, Mr. President, for the confidence reposed in me to be with you these next four years. I'd also like to thank the parliamentarians um, for approving uh, your nomination. I thank my colleague ministers for the accommodation uh, and the cooperation uh, in the first term. And would like to also thank the Ministry of Finance and team um, for the work that they have done. Um, also thanking Honorable Charles and Chief Director um, for the leadership. I cannot, of course, forget um, the role that um, the governor played in making sure that the budget was well prepared. 
and certainly to thank our ubiquitous uh, majority leader who went as far as buying a similar brown bag to be able to bring <laughs> the budget uh, um, to, uh, to, to Parliament. Uh, and Mr. President, to thank the VIP um, for ensuring um, that things went smoothly, spending a lot of time with us at the Ministry. Mr. President, for the past four years, uh, you have embarked on a journey to grow the economy, create decent jobs, and provide social protection for the vulnerable in our society, and improve the socio-economic conditions of our people. By the grace of the Almighty God, Mr. President, you kept your commitment to fellow Ghanaians, and they have kept faith with you with the second mandate. The resilience of our country and people and your remarkable leadership enabled us to weather the COVID-19 storm better than our peers. Mr. President, we could not have successfully without the support of our key domestic and international partners, including Parliament, our social partners, namely organized labor, CSO employers, the media and fair-based organizations, and our development partners, AFDB, IMF, World Bank, and the other countries. I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to all these stakeholders for their continuing support towards our journey to building a Ghana beyond aid, a prosperous and self-confident Ghana in charge of her economic destiny. So, President, I assure you that I'll continue to serve with integrity and to protect the public purse. Through the Batampa Ghana Cares Program, we will implement your vision to modernize, transform the economy, and build a strong Ghanaian enterprise and businesses. Mr. President, the work ahead will be monumental, and we are not naive regarding the effort required. Like Nehemiah, we continue to remain resolute in the face of this global pandemic and skepticism. We know our Lord will give us success, as he did in times of Nehemiah, and has done for us since we came into government in 2017 with two fish and five loaves. I hope that we can work together to accomplish these objectives. This is our moment to rise up and build and set our hands to the good work which lies ahead for us. J.B. Danka reminds us that we intend to raise our country to the highest possible pitch equal to no other country in the world. This was in 1950. Mr. President, yes, we have charted the course for this Ghana beyond aid. The nation looks to your leadership to get us there and will commit to be behind you in all that we do. As Ibrahim Amu said, Asem Yidika, Hina Nebeka, Ejumei Yidiye. Mr. President, we are committed to helping build a Ghana. Thank you, and may God bless our homeland Ghana. Amen. We thank Honorable Minister for Finance so very much, and we all join Mr. President, to convey hearty congratulations once again to you and wish you God's blessings and success as you continue to stay the affairs of state in relation to uh, finance and the economy. Thank you very much. It's now my pleasure to invite the Honorable Minister to have photo opportunity with Mr. President.
House of Finance Minister, please. The Governor. So this is the wife and family who join again. Family. Thank you very much. Another round of applause. So. Thank you so very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of the ceremony, but before we depart, may I once again invite Reverend Father Campbell to close us with a prayer, after which uh, uh, the, our guests are treated to remain seated. You'll be served with uh, refreshment packs. Thank you very much. Please bow your heads in prayer. Lord, we thank you for a successful swearing in ceremony for Minister of Finance, Honorable Ken Foriata. Having been sworn in and having Taken to three oaths of allegiance, office, and secrecy. Lord, I commit him to your, your loving care and guidance. I send him out to his office and places of work to practice the oaths he has just taken. Lord, his assignments are not easy. He will need you, so please strengthen him. Protect him, guide him on his journey. With clean hands and clean heart, may he fulfill your mission as the Minister of Finance. May he continue to be selfless, continue to be caring, enthusiastic, and hardworking. May he also continue to have that special love and empathy for the poor and the needy, for the marginalized, for the street children and the lepers, and all those whom he takes care of. I commit him to God's loving care and ask you to bless him. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon him and come down upon each and every one of us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Shall I be upstanding for the national anthem?
very much. Have a good evening.